Medyo malita. <laughs> Did you write the sins, the chain, the sorrow, the tragedy, and the story? We break the shackles, we fix the discords, coast to coast, overseas, in the pain, above the rim, oh, we suffer, but didn't stop there. Pero bakit kasalanan ko? Parang kasalanan ko. We're timing in, we're on the switch, we in the hymn house, the real Jeezy, the Saints gang, rhyme and dance and praising, singing, no breaks, no limits, he is calling. We on the stage, off life, flashing lights, camera, action, fighting bad guys, loving bad guys, on the runway, doing his way, taking off from the cross line, we in spirit on bars. Here we go. Speaking of bars, word for today, are we loving thy neighbors now? The Saints. Messy Saints. Good evening, Feast Makati Legaspi! Good evening, good evening also to all our online worshippers. Happy Thursday! How's your Thursday? Good! Good! Amen! Amen! Happy Women's Month! Alam ba natin yon? It's our month! Amen! It's our month! It's our month! Kuya Tolitz! It's our month because you enable women too! So, we... We worship the Lord today for all of the women in our lives. And we also thank the men in our lives who also empower and enable women. Amen? Amen. 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 Two weeks na lang, Holy Week. Tama bang aking calculation? Amen. Two weeks na lang. And it made me reflect today, how am I preparing for Holy Week? Have you heard of the Hello app? Yes, yes. It's very good. We've been doing this Surrender Novena. Ang ganda niya, if you have a chance, I'm not paid to plug about it because it's a Catholic app and it's really nice. I, I want to share it with you because I've been doing it, trying to do it every day. Very short reflections. And there's this prayer that I want to share with you and I move to share it. There's a prayer there, a meditation prayer, which calmed my heart in the midst of busyness. Sinong busy? Ayan, ang dami, ang daming busy. Yeah? But um, there's this prayer that was taught in the hat. Uh, when I was doing the Surrender Novena, it says, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Can we say that? Can you indulge me? Can we say that? Jesus, Jesus I surrender myself to you. I surrender myself. Take care of everything. Take care. Take care. Amen. Amen. And when I pray that, all of a sudden, parang, whoop! Nawala na yung stress. Hindi, no joke. Pero parang may stress nandiyan pa rin. Pero parang there's this calm, sense of calm inside. Amen? And so tonight, if you're bringing in anything from your, your work, family, health concerns, or if you're bringing something that you're praying for your loved one, I encourage you tonight, it's the night of surrender. Amen? Can we, can we all stand? And as we pray... And as we thank God for bringing us here tonight, as we surrender our hearts to Him, and as we worship Him through this song, Lord, we pray and we thank You for bringing us here tonight alive and well. Amen? Amen. As we begin a night of worship, Lord, we surrender ourselves, our loved ones, to You. Jesus, take care of everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father God, we thank you that tonight you are taking care of our concerns. You are taking care of our loved ones. You are taking care of our health. You are taking care of our work. Tonight you're telling us nothing is impossible to you if we surrender. Hallelujah. And we sing this song. Join us as we worship Him. Meditate on the words of this song, my dearest brothers and sisters, as we sing. Hallelujah. Through you, I can do anything. Yes, Father. I can do all things. Cause 
Cause it's you who gives me strength Sing it! Nothing is impossible Through you Blind eyes are open Hallelujah! Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Let's praise! Nothing is impossible
Lahat-lahat. Who needs healing in their relationships? Raise your hands. They believe in miracles. Amen. Tonight is a night of miracles. Amen. Where the impossible will be possible. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Feast Makati Legaspi. I'd like you to greet the person beside you. Pakasabi, welcome home. Welcome home. We hope you make this your Thursday habit. We have been meeting here ever since. And I'd like to make that announcement. We have never stopped feasting in every Thursday since 2009. Grabe, no? Since 2009, tuloy tuloy ang feast. Even in the pandemic, this is the, this is the month na nagsimula yung pandemic in 2020. Four years ago. Grabe, no? Parang tanda na natin, no? Four years ago, March, nagsimula yung pandemic, tumuloy yung feast. Not one Thursday did we miss it. And yung feast ang nakabuhay sa atin, I believe that. It helped me, it helped you. It helped us survive a pandemic. And we will never stop feasting. Say this, we will never stop feasting. We will never stop feasting. As long as God wants us to feast, we will feast every Thursday. So just come, sagot na namin yung content, sagot na namin yung miracle, sagot nyo lang yung pagpunta. Deal? Yeah. Welcome home. You are welcome here. Can you declare to the person beside you, you are welcome here. We hope you make this your Thursday habit. Pag nag-post ho kayo, every time you post, and I can invite you to post about what you learned in the experience. Post nyo yung picture ng kape, ng pakasarap yung kape. Lagyan yung hashtag, My Web is Habit, or hashtag, Feast Makati Legaspi. And share this to the world. More people need to hear this. There's another significant thing that happens on March. Ask me ko ano yun. Ano yun? Sabi nyo. March 2, 2017, it's the first time I became a builder. So that is seven years ago. So this week, seven years na ho ako nagbibuild. And it's my joy to, to be here with you, to be assigned to you. And sabi nila, seven is usually, uh, seven means something. Seven means completion. So God, God bless you. See you next week. No, it means completion, but it also means perfection. So I claim the second one alang. Not that we have perfected what we do. Every week we're stu studying, every week we're adjusting. But I think we've perfected our calling and saying yes to God. So if you're here with us and you've been blessed these past years, whether it's seven years you've joined us or seven days ago, welcome home. May this be your Thursday habit. May this be a journey you'd go through. And I'm here as long as God calls me to build, I will continue here. I will, might be assigning some people to also preach para medyo iba naman yung jokes na narinig nyo. But I will still be here until God calls me to stop or to home. Amen? Amen. So tell the person beside you, tuloy natin tong journey. Tuloy natin tong journey. I'm ready for next seven years. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause. I'd like to address those who are online. For the online audience, please share this live stream. Please help us reach more people, share as, to, as much as GCs as you can. Ang tawag sa GC, gossip, chat. Tama ba? Pakishare sa lahat ng mga chismisan chats nyo. But share it and comment and tag as much people as you can. Alright. Tonight, we begin a brand new series entitled, Messy Saints. Pakasabi nga yun. Messy Saints. Ang message ng Messy Saints, simple lang naman. Love thy neighbor, even if they drive you nuts. <laughs> Hirap na. <laughs> Love thy neighbor. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, kasama ka doon. Kasama ka sa Messi at nuts ka talaga. Ang sarap, ang sarap malaman, ano? How can I do it? Brother, ito, hirap na na. How can I love my neighbor even if nakakaloko at nakakaloko ka sila? Ang hirap, brother, to. So for this series, we're going to journey to the first years of the Christian movement. Mag the New Testament studies tayo. Tapos tayo sa Old Testament last series. Yes. Now New Testament. Specifically, pag-aaralan natin yung letter ni St. Paul sa Corinthians. Let's discover if it's really possible nga naman ba to love thy neighbor. If you are curious about how, let's start off by praying our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together. Today I receive all of God's love for me. The limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. God's powerful champion. Because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Lift your hands towards the word. Let's sing in honor of God. Facebook, hindi down. Yung Facebook, not down. Ano? Yung Facebook, up lagi. I mean, let's, um, for some of us, sige, let's continue with the message. For some of us, we assume that the first Christians were very holy. Diba? Assumption natin na pinaka-radical, pinaka-holy, pinaka-loving. Pinaka- right after the crucifixion, right after the baptism of the Holy Spirit sa Pentecost, assumption natin, wow, siguro pinaka-holy sila pinaka-perfect kasi lapit nila kay Lord nung nandito pa si Lord. Lapit nila sa tilagang, talagang unang bas-bas na Holy Spirit. And siguro naman effective kasi umabot ngayon, 2,000 years ago, we're still Christian. We still believe the same beliefs as they had. So siguro effective sila. Siguro it started to them then. Siguro naman tumuloy now. Pero totoo nga ba? Were the first Christians good? Were they effective? Were they nice people? Were they kind? Were they already loving their neighbor? Like what the series declares. Spoiler, hindi. <laughs> the first Christians, and what we're gonna read about tonight, hindi pa sila perfect. Maraming flaws. Maraming pagkakamali. Maraming issues. Tonight, we're gonna find out that they have similar problems and issues as we have now. And we'll see that hindi rin Um, hindi, they weren't the champ. Also, can become better now, because even if they we started so so, medyo hindi pa ganon ka holy, God can help us get better and better. I wanted to say that get better and better. Sarap na nako kasi kung hindi ka pa good you can become better and better. So may process. Brother, ito, ay salamat kasi feeling ko hindi pa ako holy. Yung katabi ko holy, pakisabi nga. Yung katabi ko holy, ako malayo pa. But that's the beauty of what you're doing here at the feast. So you get better and better. And we can read it in one of the most powerful Bible verses. Let's read this together. 2 Corinthians says, All of us, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as from the Lord who is the Spirit. Say transformed. Say glory to glory. God understands na hindi tayo perfect, but He has a plan to transform us to become better and better from glory to glory. Declare this, I can get better. Tonight, we're going to find out how the early church needed to change and how we too, the later church, can also change. Amen? My one big message for tonight is how. It says, go back to the cross. Pakasabi nga yan. That's our declaration tonight. Whenever you have a problem at, at your feasting, go back to the cross. Saan cross? Ito, sample. If you have a difficulty with a neighbor, go back to the cross. If you have a sin, that you cannot defeat, go back to the cross. If, you're, if you have a sickness that is depressing you, a financial difficulty that is burdening you, burdening you, go back to the cross. Father, speak a word of love into our hearts. Speak into our situation where we need clarity, where we need a message, where we need hope. Give us life as we all go back to the cross starting tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift your hands again and let's sing. up 
applause. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, worship team. Take your seats, everybody. Feel at home. Kita nyo, people in front, okay lang ba? Gusto nyo umatras ako konti? Pwede nyo twist ng konti. Excited sila, Omer. Hello, everybody. Can you greet the person beside you? Hi. Sana magkakilala tayo more. Noon nasa AIM pa kami, seven years ago. Um, ay, nakita pa niyo yung picture ko dati, no? Mas payat ako nun. Nung sa AIM, dream ko yun na magkakakilala-kilala yung left side sa right side kasi ang sarap na medyo family tayo. And thank God that's happening. We know you. We hope to know you more. We hope you know each other more. Amen? I have a few announcements before we continue. First of all, my name is Brother Tot Relova. For the first timers here, I'm the feast builder here, sabi ko nga, seven years ago. But prior to that, I've been serving God in this feast since 2009 as, as one of the servants. And it's my joy to journey with you. This is Feast Makati Legaspi. We have found a new home here in, in Accelerate, and we're blessed here. And we pray the Lord will grow us here. Eventually, may tao na dito sa gitna. Eventually, mapupuno na natin. But it's not a problem. Whoever's here, we're here to journey with you. If you're blessed here, can I invite you to give? This is a love, there's a love offering envelope that if it is okay, if you help us, if you're finding hope here, help us out. We're flashing our bank account details. For those who are online, can you send a love offering that helps us fund whatever we're doing here so we can continue? For those who are here, do that later on. Please, put, uh, please um, pray about it, kung how much the Lord is blessing you. And if the Lord says, okay, let's help this feast. That goes to this feast. That goes to us continuing. So that helps us out. And so we've lasted... For 15 years, 15 years na Home Feast Makati, we will celebrate that in May because of your kindness. Can we give you a round of applause? Let's give each other a round of applause. And in fact, last week, who were here last week, raise your hands. We were able to show that we are receiving, but we are giving back. Last week, we were able to invite our friends from Anawim and from um, Je Jeremiah Foundation, Brother Hermie Morelos from Anawim, Sister Risa Singson Kaupeng from Jeremiah. We're able to give our love offering to them. So what you give, we give also to those who need it. So I, let's give each other a round of applause. Thank you. Every donor, every giver is a blessing, and I pray God will bless you back. Amen? Know that. If you give to God, He will bless you back. Amen? I'd also like to Thank everyone who signed up in the ministry fair. sign up, John. Last week, we had our ministry fair. For those who want to serve with us, that last week was perfect. Um, Nag-sign up, may marami nag-sign up sa ganitong ministry, sa ganitong ministry. If hindi kayo nakasama last week, hindi pa naman tapos. You can still sign up. Just approach any servant. Say, if you say, medyo nag nahiya ako last week, pero sige, ready na raw ako. Kinausap na ako ni Lord. Ngayon ako magsasign up. Preacher na ako. Ay. <laughs> No, but if you want to sign up, please, we're always open. Any, anyone who wants to sign up, for example, social media, we need help. We need people who will help us with art, with gimmicks, with activities, people who help us on stage. You can sign up anytime if you feel that God is calling you. So just sign up. We're here to journey with you. And for those who have signed up, thank you. Can we give your, them a round of applause? Alam ko, the Lord will bless you back. That's how servants are why we serve is because we thank God, but also we're blessed when we serve. When we give out, then we receive more. Amen? So finally, I'll make an announcement. First time nyo marinig to. Join us for a district gathering of Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday this year, makikita kita tayo with the rest of the Makati district, that's Makati, Tagig, and Mandaluyong, in one event, Easter Sunday celebration. Please join us at, on March 31, Easter Sunday. Hapon ho. May Holy Mass tayo. A bishop will come. I'm not sure kung si Pope pwede. Pwede si Pope. Medyo chichak na yung helicopter rates. Pero may bishop tayong in-invite to celebrate Mass. But you're going to join forces with the other feasters in Salcedo, Glorieta, Tagig, in Mandaluyong, in Akasha. We're going to join forces. Proud Legaspi. Hope marami tayo. Let's represent, guys. Let's show them that, wow, Legaspi, strong there. So please save the date. Easter Sunday, 1.30 to 4 p.m., Lourdes School of Mandaluyong. So Feast Mandaluyong will be the host. So sa Lourdes School tayo, that's right beside uh, Shangri-La Mall. Shangri-La Plaza Mall. There's a Lourdes School of Mandaluyong. There's St. Francis Square. At uh, St. Francis Church. May theater don, where Feast Mandaluyong is, is happening. Please sign up. Our website has all the details. Our website is fmly.ph. And then you sign up form so we can know kung ilan tayo so we can prepare for that. All right? Tell the person beside you, let's 
celebrate Easter, Feaster. <laughs> okay, let's give a round of applause and of announcements. All right, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. One big message. Let's declare our one big message again. Go back to the cross. Say that. Tonight, we're going to draw lessons from the, first, from the way the first Christians lived. And we'll find through the first book of Paul to the Corinthians. Pakasabi Corinthians. Question. Bakit si Paul ang pinakanangailangan ng forgiveness? Bakit? Because he is Saint Paul. Grabe, ang grabe. Natuwa ba sila doon to? Let's on na inis. Pakasabi sa katabi, forgive na natin si brother to. Lent naman. Saint Paul. Okay, we're going to talk about Saint Paul. Saint Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Bakit Corinthians ang tawag nila? Because from, they're from Corinth. Corinth ang name, kaya Corinthians sila. So, we'll know the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We know that it's a book. Who knows where it is in the Bible? You know where it is? In front of the second book of the Corinthians. Yeah. New Testament, correct. Saint Paul, oh, sorry, the first letter, first book of Corinthians is in the New Testament. And we know it as a book. Diba book siya? Diba may Corinthians, may Thessalonians, may Gospels. We know it's a book. But in reality, it's a letter. Sulat siya. In short, if you put it in modern times, it's St. Paul sending an email to his friends in a land called Corinth. It's a letter. Naging book eventually kasi it was compiled with the other letters and the other scrolls. But in reality, it was a letter. Ibig sabihin, St. Paul was writing a letter to his friends. And nakikiusyoso lang tayo. Binabasa natin yung sulat niya sa mga kaibigan niya. Specifically, to a church that is in Corinth. Kaya, kaya siya first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Kasi it was literally a letter. Got it? Hindi siya book na sinulat niya, na author siya. It's a letter, literally. It's an email. And ito yon. This is what's key. It being a letter to a certain group, meron parts doon na hindi natin gets. Kasi may usapan silang private na sinama ni Paul doon. Gets? Di ba pag nagsusulat tayong letter, may mga jokes na hidden kayo kung grupo ang kilala mo, ang pinapadala mo ng sulat. May mga tao na hindi kilala ng lahat, pero internally, kilala nyo. Kaya pala, there are some names in the letter na hindi natin kilala, pero sinama ni Paul kasi sulat niya yun sa kanila. May mga private and awkward content. May, may, may pagkataray minsan si Paul kasi sulat niya yun eh. It's not like he's writing to us directly. He's writing to them and nababasa lang natin. May mga chismis doon. Yun, sino mahilig sa chismis? Huwag niya itaas kamay niya. And again, may names. Some of the names that are there, like we'll read later, is Sostenes and Chloe. So maririnig niyo sa letter. Kaya pala, kaya some of you who might read Corinthians, bakit may pangalan dito? May, may wisdom ba ang name na to? May code ba tong name? Hindi, tao yun. Because Paul was writing to his friends in Corinth. But the Corinthians, the people that he was talking to, knew what he was talking about. Kasi letter siya. Ako personally, pag meron nagkakwento sa akin, may kilala ba kayong ganito? Nagkakwento sa isang tao, tapos may mga name drop siya na pangalan na hindi mo kilala, pero kala niya kilala mo. May, may, hindi ko sabihin kung sino yung district builder na Makati yun. Pero mahilig siya. <laughs> Tsaka yung boss ko dati. Na kunyari, nagkakwento. Tapos mamaya ang sasabihin niya, alam mo yun, o oh nga, tapos si Mario de, Mag- de, Ma- uh, de Mayuga, ganito nga siya. Natapos na yung kwento, sabi ko, sino si Mario de Mayuga? Ay, hindi mo ba kilala? Yung parang assumption niya, kilala natin. Yun. Sorry. Pet peeve ko yun. <laughs> Kaya kinaklarify ko, sino si ganito. Ina-assume niya kasi. So the letter of Paul to the Corinthians was the same. May mga names, may mga codes na hindi alam natin 20th, 20th, 22nd century Christians, kung sino yun, but that's the explanation. So this letter, we're going to read about it, is Paul addressing a group he knew intimately. Why, Brother To, did Paul know the Corinthians? He started the church, and he lived there for one and a half years. For 18 months, Paul was building a church. And hindi siya church na parang church, ha? He was building small groups in homes, 10 to 15 people. Trivia. Paul actually wrote the letter to the Corinthians 
not the, when he was in Corinth, kaya nagsusulat nga siya, he was not there. He was in Asia Minor. Asia Minor then was like Turkey. Sa may Turkey siya. So nakaalis na siya, sinusulatan. Isa pang trivia, he wrote the letter, the first letter of Corinthians, as a response. Because nagsulat ang Corinthians sa kanila. Hindi na sinami ng Bible authors yung sulat ni Corinthians, syempre. Sin- sinama ng Bible yung response niya. So, reply siya sa email. This letter is a reply of Paul to the Corinthians. And ito yon. He is replying, he is responding, kasi he is disappointed at them. The Corinthians were doing bad. Ah, brother, ito kala ko, first Christians, mababait. Hindi. Pinapagalitan ni Paul yung Corinthians sa first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Respond siya kasi sinulatan siya, nagreklamo, nagsumbong, ito yung sagot ko. For, ah, hindi pala ganun. Sulat, ganun ito yung sagot ko. First letter of Paul to Cor- Corinthians. And through this letter, we find out that Corinth was in crisis and Paul needed to fix things. Claro, backstory. At least ako learned something new tonight when I was preparing this. So again, in the first book of Corinthians, letter of Paul to Corinthians, we follow along as Paul writes this problematic church of his about the five troubles in their church. May limang problema na iniisa-isa niya ni St. Paul. We're going to talk about each of the five in the next few weeks. Isang, isang problem pag-usapan natin tonight. So we're going to talk about each and ganito, brother to, ano bang matututunan ko para sa buhay ko ngayon? It was Paul writing and making pagalit to his friends back then. Pray nyo na Lord, ko ano naman kailangan ko ngayon, sana may matutunan ako sa pagbasa sa sulat ni Paul sa mga kaibigan niya sa Corinth. Put your hands up heart. Say this, Lord, speak to my now as we read your word of old. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Uh, all right. So the five problems that the book of Corinthians will highlight are these. Number one, disunity. Pakasabi disunity. Number two, sexual immorality. Pakasabi. Number three, legal disputes. Pakasabi. Abuses in the Eucharist. Pakasabi. And doubts on the resurrection. Pakasabi. Brother to, para mga problema nila, para lalaki ah. Para hindi simbahan yung grupong yan. Imagine, pinagtududahan ang resurrection and the mere fact they're there, they are here because they believe in Christ. So, it, okay, ang laki ng problema ni Paul. That's why he came out with this letter. We're gonna talk about that, Isa Isa. Major problems. In short, brother to, pasaway ang Corinthians. Pasaway sila. They're so non-Christian-like. Note, this was 30 to 40 years after the resurrection. Ha? Medyo fresh pa si Jesus na ka, ka, ka resurrect So yung balita ng salita ng Diyos, fresh. Kita mo pa may witnesses actual na nakilala si Jesus. Probably some of them actually went to Jerusalem noon nandun si Jesus. So medyo nandun sila and yet ganito sila. And sadly, the early church had many failures na even at that stage. So Paul writes to them, and addresses these issues one, uh, one by one. Funny thing is, the letter becomes part of the Bible. Diba? Private letter ni Paul to his group in Corinthians eventually sinam sa Bible para matuturo tayo from them. And we're grateful because some of the best Bible verses are from the first and second book of Corinthians. It's wisdom for us all to learn from and we thank God for that. Pero ganito, if you were from Corinth at sinulat na ni Paul ng scathing letter at ipapublish sa buong mundo, sa buong generations to come, nakakahiya, nakakaya na maralaman ng buong mundo for generations to come, ang baho nyo. Pakasabi sa katabi nyo, cringe. Mga bata, ganun kami. Mga cringe, yung sabi namin. Imagine, kung ang email ng private email mo, pinablish sa, sa internet. Ganun siguro ang feeling ng Corinthians. Naku, yung problema nating lima, pinablish ni St. Paul or ginawang Bible book eventually at alam tuloy ng mundo kung gano'ng kabaho ang Corinthians. Sikat na ang sakit natin. So, I'm sure God had a purpose why He did that. God wanted that to happen. And so knowing this 
And despite of them, yun ang kausap ni Paul, nakakagulat kung bakit ito yung sinabi ni Paul. Ito yung intro ni Paul sa letter. Kahit alam na natin kung sino yung kinakausap niya, medyo may problema. This is how Paul started the letter. Let's read this. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, and our dear brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Brother, to, kala ko bang problemado yung mga tao doon? Kala ko bang may problema si Paul sa kanila? Kala, kala ko bang masasama pa sila? Bakit sinabi ni Paul, ang tawag sa kanila, they are sanctified in Christ. They are saints. Parang hindi tama, brother, to. Parang ibang grupo ata yung kinausap niya. I love this. Paul addressed the disobedient, the pasaway, the self-centered, the toxic Christians as sanctified in Christ. They call them saints. Pakisabi sa katabi mo, I am a saint. Sabi niyo nga. Di ba cringe? Nakakaya, di ba? Kung nalaman mo lang ginawa ko, brother, to, bago pumunta dito, may nagkat sa akin sa kalye. At naglalakad lang kami pareho, ha? <laughs> Nagalit. Nagalit ako, brother, to. Papunta dito. I am not a saint. But I love it. That's how Paul declared to his church na I know you're not saintly yet, but I call you saints nonetheless. I call you sanctified. Kasi tayo ganun din, di ba? Kahit pasaway tayo, pasado tayo. I love that. Even if we're not holy, we're far from holy, God says, no, you're a saint. Brother to, eh, baka hindi nyo kalala. Who we are, I want to drive this home. Who we are is not defined by our mistakes, but by our maker. Personalize that. Who I am, say that is not defined by my mistakes but by my maker. Can we give him a round of applause? I hope that frees a lot of people into thinking, hindi ako worthy dito bro, at kinaladkad lang ako ng, ng friend ko dito, hindi naman ako worthy. I feel dirty. No. At the first part of this talk, just as Paul declared to his disobedient crowd, he said, ne, you are saints. Even if you don't see it yet in you, you got to believe it's true. Who you are is not defined by your mistakes, but by your maker who says, no, you are sanctified, you're a saint. Put your name in front of saint, then your name. Saint, say your name. Saint, saint. Parang hindi makasira tayong left. Left group, hindi. Right group, saintly. Olet, saint, say your name. Let's give it a round of applause. So, brother, I haven't done anything yet. Why can I be a saint? How can I be a saint? I don't feel I'm worthy. I think I'm messy. Ganito. Have you ever seen a construction project? Parang ganito yung sura. I'm an engineer by profession, so I know this by, by, by trade and by experience. Ang construction project... Pangit tignan. It looks awful. It looks dirty. It looks disorganized. It looks messy. But in the eyes of the designer, it's beautiful. It's potential. And I know what it will look like someday. Ganon tayo. You know why? Because we are under construction. If you feel hindi ka pa declare yourself, it's okay. I'm under construction. If you feel antaray mo pa, declare that. It's okay. I'm under construction. Ginagawa pa ako ni Lord. The Lord sees me and calls me a saint because He knows my final product. But in the meantime, I am under construction. Start using that word. I'm under construction. Say that. So whether you're frustrated with your progress, whether you're hurt by people who tell you, kala ko ba nang kifis ka? Ba't ganyan ugali mo? Aray, sakit na na. Sinabihan na ba kayo ng ganun? Kala ko nang kifis ka? Ba't ganyan ugali mo? De- declare them, kahit pabulong, I'm under construction. Kaya ako nga nagpifist eh, para magbago pa ako ng konti. Sama ka na. <laughs> so declare that. God, is, and, and see this, God is our builder, not brother to. Declare this. God is your builder, architect, and designer. You're the house he's building. And you're under construction. 
So even if you don't feel that you're worthy, that God is still unfinished with you, yes, He's not yet finished. You're under construction. Brother to, 50 years ate yung construction project na to. Hindi pa rin. You're still under construction. And I'm not finished with you yet, the Lord will tell you. Amen? Let's give the Lord a round of applause. You're going to get better and better if you trust your designer. Amen? Amen. So in the same way, ganito, let's connect it. In the same way, God is also building His church. The church is also under construction. The church in Corinth is also under construction. Brother to, question. In church in Corinth, thousands of years ago, but ngayon yung church ngayon sa Pilipinas, church sa mundo, under construction pa rin ba? Ba't pa kaya lang church kung hindi pa rin tayo nagbabago o natututo? Spoiler, ganito. The church won't ever be perfect on this side of heaven. I just want to tell you that. Kasi kala nyo you will reach a stage na wala nang, wala nang magagalit-galit sa church, wala nang matatare sa church, wala nang anger issues sa church, wala nang conflict sa church. While we're here on planet Earth, God's church God's church will always be chaotic. While we're here on planet Earth, God's church will always be chaotic. That's why we need God. If we were perfect, we wouldn't need God. That's why we re- rely on fresh blessings, fresh forgiveness every day. Because the church will never be fixed. But, li- but this is the point. Brother, why, ch- why go to church kung hindi tayo maayos? Hindi. Because God is here. Why do you still need to go to church? Because God is here. And God is, a church is where God speaks to you, where God heals you, where God ministers to you, where He comforts you. That's why you still go to church. Kahit alam niyong medyo magulo pa. And here's where God will help build a better you. And so, sige, brother to, I might not be, have a perfect church, but at least every time I go to church, I get better and better. I learned something new that will help me become better tomorrow. And I learned something that I need to make a better me. We will move from glory to glory as we continue to experience God in church. Amen? Declare this. Yes, I need church. Let's give Lord a round of applause. So tonight, let's study the chaoticness in Corinth and how Paul addressed them. Ito na. Paul will address the, the problem that we're going to talk about tonight. One of the five. Let's read this. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there, are no, that there be no divisions among you. Sabino, no divisions. But that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Napakahugot na itong statement kasi parang kausap ng isang tao sa simbahan at in-email niya yung grupo niya. Ba't ba tayo hati-hati? Ba't ba tayo watak-watak? What this says is the church in Corinth nag-aaway-aaway. Nagkakagrupo-grupo. Uy, relate. May divisions among them. Meron preferences. Kay Paul sila. Ito kay Apollos. Yan kay Cephas. Sinasabi ni Paul, di ba dapat kay Christ tayo lahat? Bakit tayo grupo-grupo? So sadly, the early church experienced that. And Paul wanted to address that. And may to speak to you because some of us might say, Brato, tagal na yan. But when you raise, oh, ano? Ganun din. The first of the five problems we're going to talk about, and the first problem we're going to talk about tonight, is we're going to study about disunity. Say that. Disunited ba tayo dito sa church? or sa church nyo, or sa bahay nyo, to, let's, let's check it. Baka relate tayo dito. Put your hands over it. Like Lord, help me to know you're talking to me. Not to the person that I wish was here. 
not just to the person beside me. Ako to Lord, ako. Let's give Lord a round of applause. Mahilig kasi tayo. Uy, ang ganda ng talk. Sana nandito si ganito. Uy, nandito. Sana ganito yung post ko nga. You're here. God is talking to you. And maybe the Lord will convict you and inspire you in one way. Amen? Okay, so ganito. The Corinthians were saying, mas magaling itong preacher, dun tayo sa grupo niya. Mas magaling itong preacher, dun tayo. Okay lang actually may preferences. It's normal to have choices to preferences. But in, even today, we gravitate to our favorite preacher, to our favorite celebrity, to our favorite inspiration. The thing is, we form cliques, groups around that leader. And what's damaging is this. Okay lang, gets mo? Okay lang naman ang may favor ka, you listen to this preacher online, you grow to this. It's okay. But here's where it's damaging. Yes, the Corinthians picked their favorite preacher, but next, after that, they looked down on those who favored other preachers. We like Paul. Dito tayo kay Paul. Kayong tiga Apollo, pangit ng grupo nyo. Yon. It's okay to choose. It's okay to prefer. But when you start looking down on others who are not your choice, who do not choose like you, then it becomes shaky. Then you get disunited. Declare that again. Disunity. Let's repeat that. There's no problem with having favorites. The problem is when we become more loyal to our cliques than our community. And that's the fastest way to destroy a group. Pag nag-grupo-grupo grupo inside a group, kanya-kanya, mas magaling kami, kayo hindi. Kunyari, nandun kayo sa parish group nyo. Uy, dito tayo kay father. Doon kay, kay father na isa pa. Mas magandang grupo namin sa inyo. Ayan, masisira na yung grupo. The moment you start choosing your cliques over your community, this unity happens, and that damages the body. Amen? You start rejecting others na hindi katulad nyo. And that's what this unity, where this unity arises. Tell the person beside you, dapat united tayo. So here it is. Sadly, what started then is actually what continued to happen throughout the church's history. Brother to, na heal ba yung disunity ng church? I'd love to say yes. But in reality, the church's history was marred by many group ugly infighting. Sabi sa isang survey, Center of the Study of Global Churches, they said there are 45,000, let's see that slide, 45,000 denominations and non-denominational churches. And we see this. And dami iba-ibang grupo, iba-ibang churches na nabuo, sanga-sanga. To the point na hindi kasi mas gusto natin to, sige dito, gawa tayong sariling grupo. Tapos kaaway natin yung grupo inalisa natin. And sadly, the body of Christ is splintered that way. Disunity, grupo-grupo, kanya-kanya, away-away. And so Paul was addressing that. And I hope we learn from that and fix our view of that tonight. Amen? Brother to, so, anong gagawin natin? How will we not be disunited? Well, let's follow Paul's advice. Sundan natin yung sasabihin niya in the next few slides. He had an advice to the conflicts in Corinth. Paul could have said this. Ito, this is not what Paul said. Paul could have said, ano ba guys? Isang simbahan lang tayo? Pwede bang magkasandusundo na lang kayo? Pwede bang alisin nyo na yung preferences nyo and you unite as one church, one body of Christ. Mag-usap-usap nga kayo. Makinig nga kayo sa isa't isa. Paul did not say that. That would have been a very practical way to say it. But Paul drove a harsher point in their hearts. Let's read what Paul said. Paul said, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. In other words, ang sinasabi ni St. Paul dito, hindi na siya nagpaligoy-ligoy pa. He went straight to the soul. Paul told them, guys, tama na yung pinag-away-awayan nyo. He told everyone, in one word, in one sentence rather, go back to the cross. Guys, balik na lang kayo sa cross. 
reset. Guys, tandaan nyo kung bakit nga kayo nandito. Hindi para mag-away, para sumunod kay Kristo. Remember why you're Christians to begin with. Balikan nyo yung una yung commitment. Before your commitment to your brother, to your sister, remember your commitment to Christ. Go back to the cross. Reset. Remind yourself why you're doing this, why you're in community, why you're in church, why you're serving, why you're following. If you forgot why, and na, na, ano ka na kayo na away-away nyo, balik kayo sa cross. Remind yourselves why. Declare that. Go back to the cross. And this is powerful because many times, whenever we have unresolved conflicts in church, it's because we've forgotten the cross. Many times, whenever we have unresolved conflicts in church, it's because we have forgotten the cross. Naging human na masyado ang organization natin. That we forgot who it is we're doing this for, who is the reason for our meeting, why we are together. Let that sink in. Question. Relate. Sometimes, we get so busy being Christian that we forget to be Christ-like. I like, I'll say that again. That's quotable. Sometimes we get so busy being Christian that we forget to be Christ-like. We get so busy with the activities of the church, we get through preoccupied with events that we forget the essentials. Love, harmony, unity, humility. Naging, Christ, naging organization na tayo, Christian organization, hindi na tayo Christ's organization. And so Jesus or St. Paul is saying, guys, para bumalik, just go back to the cross. Remind yourself of why you're doing this in the first place. Remind yourself who called you here together. We may fight amongst ourselves. We can bicker. We can leave the group. We have unresolved church conflicts simply because we've forgotten the cross. Nakalimutan natin ang rason. Aray ko po. And that's a wake-up call. Brother to, do you mean, what do you mean by you've forgotten the cross? First, we have forgotten the love Jesus gave to us on the cross. Second, we've forgotten the call to die on that cross. Ganda. When we go back to the cross, we go back so we can remember the love He gave us. That's why He died. But also, this cross should remind us na tayo din kailangan ipako natin sa cross natin ang pride natin, ang infighting natin, ang tampuhan natin. Pray this. Put your hands over your heart. Say this. Lord, help me to always remember the cross. And may this help me be a champion for unity in my group. Let's give a round of applause. So how does this brilliant St. Paul address this with the Corinth church? Ito yung ginawa ni Paul. Let's continue reading. The churches from Corinth should learn from this, but also the church now here in Legaspi, in Corinthian Plaza. Oh, ang galing. Corinthian Plaza nga pala ito. Ngayon ko lang nag-gets. Corinth. Nag-gets, no? Corinthian Plaza yung building ka sa tabi. Nox. Buti hindi tayo church in Corinth. We're church in 111 Paseo de Ross building. Yung building natin, pangalan 111 Paseo. Wala man lang code. Accelerate building na lang. How will Paul address the church in Corinth and how will he address us? How will he fix us? Ito, the truth. Paul knows that the most conflicts, most of the conflicts are rooted in one principle. This is the reason why we have conflicts. Kung nagtataka kayo, brother to, ba't kayo nag-away-away? Ito, we have conflicts because we think we're right and they're wrong. Tama true? Brother to, talaga, katulad ko, when I was... I remember sharing this, tas may isang servant nagsabi sa akin, naalala niya. Sa road, I'm a, I'm a defensive driver. Next. I am a great defensive driver. Hindi ako offensive, hindi ako nag, nagkakat, pero hindi ako nagpapakat. Gets nyo? Ang mas maganda yun, di ba? I think in my mind, every driver is wrong except me. <laughs> Tama, di ba? 
drivers, raise your hands. Kahit e-trike, e-bike, e-trike drivers. Ang alam na, lalo na yung motor. Motor and bicycles. And, and sabi ko kay Reme, Tito Remel kanina, dati, nainis ako sa mga motor. Pero nung na-realize ko, magbabike na rin ako, paasan nga naman sila dadaan kung kinukuha natin yung road. So nga, share the road. You, you get empathy. Anyway, ang feeling ko sa driving, lahat ng drivers mali. Ako lang tama. Which is a wrong thing to feel. That's why conflicts happen when we have that feeling that every, I'm the only one right and everyone else is wrong. And that's how conflicts begin and that's how conflicts fester and continue. In a conflict, we think we're wise and the other person is foolish. Tama or true? <laughs> so to this, knowing this, this is how St. Paul addresses the church. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. In other words, yan, mas magandali, mas magandali yan. Ang pinakasinasabi ni St. Paul ganito, ito trivia muna. There's a stinging slap to the Greek readers, itong message na to. Because the Greek readers who were reading the letter, who just were converted, they were living in a society where wisdom was worshipped. Sa unang panahon, in Corinth, or in society then, ang mga matatalino ang pinakamagagaling. Goals ang maging matalino. Goals ang maging wise. Goals ang maging high up in terms of wisdom. If you were wise, you were like little gods in society before. Ikaw yung goals. Ikaw yung relationship, hindi, relationship goal. Ikaw yung wisdom goal. So kung gusto mo mag-ascend ng ladder, you need to be intelligent. But this is what Paul strikes. Kala nyo, yung wisdom ang may importante. Hindi. Because we think we're wise and they're foolish, kaya nag tayo. Hindi. Hindi wisdom ang goal ni Jesus. But about this esteemed wisdom, Paul says, all your wisdom is foolishness compared to the cross of Jesus. Boom. Sa mga matatalino, sa mga feeling silang pinakamagaling, sinasabi ni St. Paul, wala yan kapag si Jesus ang pinag-uusapan. It's not important that you're wise that you're intelligent, that you think you know it all, and you're better than the others. Paul is saying, no. Compared to the cross, your intelligence is foolishness. Grabe na. So how does this connect to the conflicts in Corinth? When we have lingering divisions, usually, it is because we believe we're right and the other person is wrong. But at the foot of the cross, all arguments and allegiances melt away. Kala natin, nag away tayo kasi tayo matalino, tayong wise, tayong magagaling, at lahat sila mali. Pero pag lahat kayo pumunta sa cross, lahat ng away nyo, lahat ng kampihan nyo, mawawala. Can you give a round of applause? In other words, I want to ask you a question now. Personal. Inam mo na ako. Nag-aaway-aaway ba tayo dito sa feast? Usapang totoo. Eh, don't answer me. Mga, mga tanong ko, eh, tinatapo ko na sa inyo. Huwag kayong mag-comment audience. Ask yourself. Reflect. Pause. Do you have conflicts now in the feast or in your feasting? Do you have disunity? Ito pa. No offend ka ba with what someone here did or said and it caused you to split apart or not feast if your online audience, if my online audience is watching and hindi na kayo nakapunta dito dahil may nagsabi na masakit at hindi ka na nabumalik dahil nasakit yung sinabi niya. Did a servant here or online do something that you will never forget and it's affecting your seeking God? Did a co-feaster make you feel 
bad. So he joined or made another group. Is your ministry mates, did they make you feel that you did not belong and you did not, you're not loved? So he joined another ministry or another community and natani mo parin yung hurt. Medyo personal, no? This is what the church in Corinth needed to hear. And this is a God's message, a personal message to us. If ganito kayo, don't worry. Hindi kayo pagagalitin ni brother to. Let's just learn from this. If you felt offended by someone here, if you splintered off because of some group here, if a servant told you something, if a brother or a builder told you something, if a builder did not notice you or said your name in a wrong way, sorry na. <laughs> but realize, this is what St. Paul has been telling to the Christians of old, and he's telling it to you now. If this is you, what is your Jesus telling you tonight? He's telling you, child, you were hurt by the group, you were hurt by that servant, you were hurt by that ministry member, you were hurt by that builder, but child, it's okay. Just go back to the cross. Just remember, it's not your builder who you're here for, it's me, Jesus says. It's not your co-servant you're here for, it is me, Jesus says. It is not your ministry member, your leader, your feaster that you're here for. It is me. And everyone in that feast will fail you, but I never will. And if I call you here, maybe I have a plan for you here. Maybe you can help build the faith and the love here. Or you can continue to forgive the people who have offended you and say, oh nga, that's part of my training. Tuturo na ni Lord na mag-forgive dito. Kasi hindi kami lahat perfect dito. Dahil chaotic talaga if you're here. I love it because we're not broadcasting this group and saying this is a perfect group. Ay, this is far from perfect. But may, it may be the perfect place where God can train you the most. That's why you're still here. Amen. So know that your feasting, your faith is for Him to begin with. Not for your inviter, not for your friend, not for your builder was the best jokes reset your focus back to him not even to me guys you may say dito kay brother to mas okay dito dito kay brother Randy dito kay brother Jan wherever the Lord leads you I'll be okay because I'm importante where you find Jesus the most dun kayo because you always go back to the cross hindi kay Apollo kay Paul kay Cephas some people may say, Brother to, kay brother bawa ko. Okay lang. If there's where you find Jesus, go. As long as gumaling ka and you feel the love, go. Here we, we will love you as much as we can in Legaspi. But wherever you find hope and joy and wherever you find a place, then grow there. Even if the place is imperfect. Amen? So tonight, just remember that. When you're an, imp an imperfect group, ang lakas ang tendency ng disunity. Uy, grabe, na-hurt ako. Sige, ayoko na dyan. Uy, grabe, na-offend ako. Grabe, nagdala akong food, tapos may humirit. Wala bang ketchup? Ay, ang sakit. <laughs> eh, biko yung binala ko, wala naman talaga ang ketchup ang biko. <laughs> Tell the person beside you, huwag na tayo magtampo. Matanda na tayo. <laughs> I can honestly tell you, no one here means to harm. Medyo may ibebang personalities na talaga dito. And we're all struggling here. Do not look at your servants. Can I honor all our servants? Can we give a round of applause for all the servants? Seven years na sila to serve with me. And we're imperfect still. We're all on our own journey. So let's give them a break. And just realize now we're all here. Let's just focus on the cross, not on each other. Amen? So even if the saints here are messy, like you, know that Jesus' love was the one who will make you stronger. So that mas totapang yung forgiveness nyo. The Lord's love will make you more loving, more understanding, and more forgiving. And my prayer is, as you go back to the cross, that you let His love melt your hurt away. Pray this. Bring me back to your cross, Lord. Bring me back to my first love with you. Let's give a little round of applause. And finally, 
Saint, let's end um, what we're reading about kay St. Paul. St. Paul gives a very penetrating finale. Ito na. Ang ganda na ito. Let's read this. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, but to those who are the called, both Jews and, Christ, and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. If that's Greek, again, <laughs> literally Greek, if that's a different language to us, simply, kausap kasi ni Paul yung society nila. A little explanation, ang Jewish culture, you want to prove you're from God through signs. Ang Greek culture, you want to prove that you're through God, or you're with God, by wisdom, higher wisdom. So yun ang ibig sabihin yan. So Paul says, we're proclaiming Christ crucified. Hindi signs at hindi wisdom ang way that we proclaim that we're with God. Si Jesus ang reason kung bakit tayo na kay God. Hindi signs at hindi wisdom. So panlaban ni Paul to sa mga Jews and sa Greeks who are listening to him. Actually, Corinth, to give you an idea, is a bustling city. In Corinth is a rich city, actually trade area to, major trade center in the Roman Empire. Kaya yung Corinthian Plaza at ang Corinthian Garden sa Quezon City pang mayaman. Kasi Corinth was a growing economic powerhouse then. So people wanted in Corinth to grab higher status. You know, as a church, they're following God, they're united with Paul, Apollos, pero in their hearts, gusto ko umangat kasi yumayaman ng city ko. So that's their mindset. They want to get higher and higher in life. And so was Paul, Paul was saying, guys, if that's your ambition, dito kay Lord, baliktad, ha? Hindi tayo paakit ng paakit. Dito pababa tayo ng pababa. Paul was saying, you go to the lower status because Jesus did. Jesus did not aspire for riches, for glory. He aspired to serve. Tayo rin. He aspired to die a criminal's death. Tayo din. Tell the someone beside you, baliktad ang goal natin dapat. Ito. Instead of going higher, we should go humbler. Kaya baliktad talaga ang kingdom ni God. You can go higher in your, in your job, in your corporate life, in your business, etc. But in ministry, in life, the best people are not the wisest, are not the most sign-filled, but the humbler people. And they were reminding them that Christianity was not an intellectual pursuit. The goal of Christianity is to die on the cross for community. Kaya ang bida dito, not man sa bida, kasi nga, it defeats the bida thing. Eh. Ang pinaka-great dito, which is pinaka-great sa kingdom, are the least are those who serve without recognition, are those who serve even if no one's noticing them, are those who serve, period, who say, Brother to, I will not sit anymore just idly, I will help out. That's the call. Let's not aspire for recognition, let's aspire to be remembered by God where we're serving in. And Paul gives a final mic drop moment in his very unique appeal to unity. First of all, Paul still talks about the cross, but this time, the cross is his life. And this last three slides of the verse, in the, it's the life of Paul, of the heads of, of the church, and the idols that they're looking at. And the, we will see who they are fighting over. Let's read this. And see the highlighted words. For, Paul says, For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as though sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To present to the present are we are hungry and thirsty, we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. 
we have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. I appeal to you then to be imitators of me. To the Corinthians who were very high and mighty and lofty, Paul says, guys, that's not the goal. The goal is to be forgotten, to give your life up, to die on the cross for others. Not to be the most brilliant, but to be the most loving, the most forgiving, the kindest in the group. Gando, Paul was a powerhouse speaker. Apollos was a powerhouse leader. Peter, si Peter na yon. But he was saying, lahat kami, kahit kalimutan nyo na, basta si Kristo lang ang tumanyag sa atin. Hindi si Paul lumalaban. And he was teaching his church that way. Let's all be humble. Tama na yung away-away. Tama na yung galit-galit. Tama na yung kanya-kanya. Let's all be here, not for each other, but for Christ. So Paul flipped it again. Baliktad dapat ang goal natin. Instead of higher, dapat humbler. That's church. That's Christ's church. In other words, Paul was saying, the very leaders you're fighting over, me, Peter, Apollos, we're now in the rubbish heap with our master Jesus. Come, follow us in the rubbish. I love that. Tara, punta tayo sa basurahan kasi basura tayo sa mundong ito. And so Paul had every reason to boast. He had every reason to say, guys, Ako ang pinakamagaling dito. No, he said, hindi. Lahat tayo dito, pababaan tayo para si Christ ang umangat. Say this, rubbish. We know what rubbish is, diba? It's trash. Say this, follow me in the rubbish. And when you talk about rubbish, it's not just going literally to the trash. It is dying to your pride and saying, sige na nga. I forgive you. It is saying, Sige na nga, I will not aspire to be the most known here. No, I will serve even if no one notices me. So, brother, sister, if you have unresolved conflicts, Paul invites you, Tara, follow me in the rubbish. Imitate me. Declare this, Lord, like you, Help me to fight for humility and unity too. I can I ask you all to stand? Can I call the team on stage? Tonight, Paul teaches us about this unity. How somehow I hope this helps us be the one who will champion unity from now on in our group, in our circles, in our families, in our workplace, in our barkada, in our society. What we learn here at the feast, dali natin sa labas, ha? let's be humble, let's be united. And I want to speak to someone if it's your pride that's preventing you from fixing your relationships, from moving on from your conflicts, from forgiving those who hurt you. Tara. Let's go back to the cross and remind ourselves why we're here in the first place. Let's go back to the rubbish. Let's go back to Jesus. Because before the crucified one, how can you exalt yourself? wala. Pagpunta mo sa cross, pagpakita mo, Lord, ang galing ko, ang, 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 ang galing ng grupo ko, matutunaw lahat yan. You get reminded, oh nga, no? I'm here to help. I'm here to forgive. You cannot make your life about you anymore. You die to yourself, to your own pride, and say, sige na nga. Let's get back together. You no longer insist that it is you that is right and they that is wrong. 
it says, Lord, let, let's love one another. At the foot of the cross, all arguments, all allegiances are replaced, are replaced by abandonment to God. Declare this. Humility. Unity. And when you're able to humble yourself, you can now be the one who pushes for unity in church. Pagsama, sige na nga. I lower my pride. I will serve. I will love. Then ikaw mismo magdadrive ng unity. Tara, let's reconcile. Let's fix what needs fixing. Because we are, because we, if we fear to continue to the last, even beyond seven years, di ba? Seven years na ako ngayon. If tutuloy natin to for the next seven years, we need to be the light in the darkness around us. We need to shine His light so people find Him in the dark. And unity isn't optional. Brother, to, sana may unity, pero hindi naman kailangan yan. Sana excellence meron ng fees na to. Sana meron coffee na magaling. Hindi. Unity isn't optional. Unity isn't an option. Unity is our mission. We gotta unite together under the banner of Jesus. And the only way to work for unity is to go back to the cross. And maybe go back to the crucified one. And so, before we pray, reflect. Think now of your conflicts. Can you close your eyes, everybody? Isipin yung mga conflict nyo, whether it be here, whether it be with your family, whether it be in another group that you came from, that's why you're now here. Pag-isipan yung mga conflicts nyo. As you worship God later on, pray for the grace to make the first move towards healing. Because what follows after unity, if you're united, what follows is peace. Because when you're in conflict, ang sakat sa heart, hindi kang makatulog. Pag naisip mo yung taong nag-hurt sa'yo, forever kang in pain. But when you strive for unity and move towards reconciliation, peace will follow. Pag may unity na kayo sa relationships, you have so much peace, so much joy, and everything will become beautiful again. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. I don't know about you, but I was just moved by the talk. It's as if God was speaking to me. And so if God spoke to you tonight, and if you're comfortable, I encourage you to just close your eyes and imagine Jesus in front of you. Telling you that, child, all will be well. Child, I can do everything in my power, in my omnipotence to love you in your struggle to forgive. To allow your heart to be open to forgive. Father, I thank you for speaking to me tonight in my messiness, in my ego, in my pride. I thank you for the gift of humility. And tonight, I accept that you are humbling me, that you are enabling me to take that first step forgiveness towards healing because I know that if I forgive I know that if I humble myself at the foot of your cross I will feel your love and I will feel your mercy and so if you have any unforgiveness in your heart any conflict that you can think of whether it's not yours or it's for a person dear to you. Tonight, we will put it at the foot of the cross. And as we lift all up our worries, all the concerns in our hearts, tonight, we will tell God, Lord, I can trust in you. I trust you. Because you know, you know what you're doing in my life. 
you know what you're doing in this season of my life. I may not understand, Father. It's not my duty to ask why. It's not my duty to question your will. It's hard, Father. It's hard. I recognize that. But tonight, I thank you for this faith that you've given me, for this feast, this community, for this heart of faith, even if, as I struggle. I thank you because you sustain me. I thank you, Father, and I come to you with a heart that is messy, with a mind that is clouded, confused. I know that I'm coming home tonight with a heart that is free, with a mind that sees the light because you are the light that shines in me. I surrender to you, O oh Father. I surrender to you.
God is telling us, child, just surrender and let me take care of it. And I believe, I believe that as we surrender and as we give whatever it is that's been holding our faith or whatever it is that's been bothering us and I believe that as we give it all to God tonight we are free we are experiencing His grace Say that. We trust you, Lord. God is good. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, take your seats. Just a few more announcements before we're done for tonight. But thank you for coming here. It's our joy every time we see you here. So wherever the Lord is blessing you, continue your journey here. Can I ask all the first timers here to please stand up? We have a special gift for you. And you will not get if you don't stand up, but please stand up. First timers, just a short time. Hindi namin kayo papa song and dance. Or Papa TikTok will just have a gift for you. Welcome, welcome to the feast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Remain standing because we will give you a gift, but we're also going to give you the gift. Kait, kait ng kyo feast kay sa iba, pero first time nyo dito, please stand up. Kasama kay sa blessing. Father, we lift up our hands towards those who are standing up, the first timers who join us today. Lord, we know that they were brought here not by their friend, not by the person who invited them, but by you through that person and we pray whatever they need from you in this moment in their lives fill that up lord if they need a breakthrough bless them if they need a miracle bless them if they need healing bless them with that lord whatever they need lord jesus as they seek you tonight may give them that and help them to continue the journey lord so they can receive more of your love here at this family you've called them to be a part of in Jesus' name we pray Amen. Amen. first timers we're gonna give you a gift after the talk please go to julius over there Kita niyo on the left si Julius. Please go there after the last message. We have a special gift for you there. Thank you. Again, um, a few announcements lang. For those who are blessed, can I ask you to be a blessing here? For those who are online, thank you for joining us. We're going to flash your bank account details here. Please help the feast out. For those who are here, there's a white envelope. Please help us out. Um, again, this is only a, a plea so that you can take part of this because we need to continue this. Sayang ang blessing, sayang ang feast. 
if hindi natin kaya sustain to financially. So if you're blessed here, can you give the feast something so that you can be blessed back and more can come? For those online, again, there's BDO, Union Bank, and GCash. It's so easy to help. And you can please send the uh, transaction slip of your giving to our page. We'll know it's for this feast. As you're doing that, as you're writing your prayer request and what you're grateful for, I'd like to call on stage all the celebrants of March. Yeah, and March now. Woo! Any birthday celebrants of March, please stand up. Birthday celebrants. Si Kat ba? Uy! Kailan ka, Kat? May gift kami sa inyo. Leia, halika. Melden. Celebrant, birthday and anniversary celebrants, please. Couples, if you have, it's March is your anniversary month. Come here. China, anniversary month. <laughs> sino na, anyone else? Wow, so alam na natin kasi sino mong manilibre. <laughs> Can we pray for our celebrants here? Raise your hands towards our celebrants. And for those who are online, please, uh, also we want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for the gift of life and the gift of love for those celebrating their birthdays this month and for all those celebrating their anniversaries this month. We pray for an overflow in their march. We pray that your blessing would flow in their lives even more this month. Give them a special gift that they celebrate life and love this month. And give them something, Lord Jesus, that can help them to overcome, help them to seek new things, help them in their mission for you. Bless them, guide them, empower them, heal them, and provide miracles in their journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. We're going to give our gift. There you go. Thank you, Julius. Wow. What are you going to <laughs> Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. A few more announcements. So that's that's what we do here. We're a family. I love it that we're sized enough to see and celebrate life together. Again, please join us on March 31 for the Great Escape. Your builders will be there. Your other feasters will be there. Please join us as we all gather under one roof. Easter Sunday, 1:30 p.m. May Mass na um, Pet friendly then your place if you want to bring your 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 I know your your pets or your, your, bring the whole family. If you haven't brought your family here, dial it's a weeknight and hit up your kids. Bring the whole family there. That place can sit up to 500 people. But please register. 130, 130. Exact, to be exact, 130 in, in start. That was please sign up. The, the website is there, fmly.ph. It has a link to sign up para lang to reserve. And of course, you will sign up under Makati Legaspi so we know kung ilan yung group from this group, from that group. Not to say that Kay Paul, kay Apollos, hindi yan ganyan. It's not, it's just there's to organize the event. So please, hopefully, to, I hope to see you there. I hope magpicture tayo lahat doon. Uy, Ligaspi, we're here. All right? Next announcement, all the singles in the house. Again, I'd like to invite you to join us for Love Life Retreat Batch 21. For the, for the singles, again, I want to clarify, hindi to related sa Love Life. Some of you may say, may Love Life na brother to, hindi ko na kailangan yan. No, it's not about Love Life. It's called that because we want to help you love life more. So if you have, if you're a single person and you have not undergone this yet, kahit may relationship ka ngayon, please, every single person passes through that sa Makati and they're so blessed because of that. That can supercharge your mission, that can help you out. Please go to our website as well. It also has a link for that. That is April 13 and 14 in Batulao, Don Bosco, Batulao. That's a great and amazing way to grow in your life. You can sign up online or you can sign up with Pau. Pau is there in the back showing an, an, an iPad. A tablet, not an iPad. iPad, Apple. Eh. Tablet, Android. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bias. <laughs> All right, so please sign up there. Um, please, please, that will help you a lot. Of course, my retreat fee, they will discuss that there, but that's really every place has, um, because we, we're going to stay in a place and we'll feed you and overfeed you and, and, and stay there for overnight. All right. Please be very active on socials or please follow us on socials. You can listen to past talks. You can link us all up to all of us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Just follow Feast Makati Gaspi in all socials so that you can continue being blessed. If you need someone to pray over you, if you need someone to talk to, go to Tito J in the back. He's going to take care of you. Next week's topic, controversial. Ano topic today? Ano ta anong topic natin ngayon? Ano message? Anong disunity? Next week, Ang topic is about sexual immorality. Wow! Controversial. Ang title na next week is Proud About Sin. Wow, intriguing, ano? Bakit kayo proud about sin? Ako intrigued din ako. I want to know as well. So please tell the person beside you, attend tayo next week. Controversial. Mas, mas, mas juicy yan. 
<laughs> so let's start. Okay. So thank you for coming. Can you all stand up? Can we lift up our love offering envelopes? Let's pray. And you can, after this, eat, drink coffee, and let's see you at the back. Lift up your love offering envelopes. Father, we thank you for the gift of the ability to give. We give back, Lord, because we're blessed. Amen. We give as a response to what you've done in our lives. Amen. We give because we believe in this church, and we want to grow this church as we are growing in this church. Jesus. Use our amount, Lord Jesus, that we're giving. Multiply it, Lord, so that all the expenses of tonight will be covered. But more so, Lord Jesus, I pray that you bless every giver tonight, whether they're giving here or online. Bless everyone with a hundredfold returns to their generosity. Show them, Lord, that you are the God who is generous. Bless them financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically, Lord. Bless them back, Lord, because of their pledge of their love through their giving. And continue to grow this feast, Lord, as we continue to grow in this feast. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. You can give and see you at the back. Let's have coffee. God bless you. See you next Thursday. Amen. As we give with joy in our hearts, let's sing our closing song for tonight. This is our battle cry. As we go into our favorite day of the week, tomorrow, Friday. Aside from Thursday, favorite natin yung Thursday, di ba? Tomorrow's Friday. Let's sing. Okay. I believe, I believe. Let's declare. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. One more time. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginnings, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, dearest brothers and sisters. See you again next week. Have a safe way home.